Okay. Um, all right, just in case we need to do any live stuff. <laughs> Okay, um, so data IO or data input output, um, we definitely wanna be able to bring in files to work with outside data. No way we're gonna enter all of our data like we were just making uh, you know, vectors of, of numbers. That would be, that would be wild. Um, so let's try to talk a little bit about how we would kind of bring our own CSV files, bring our own data into R so that we can do really, really cool, really cool, powerful stuff with, um, with our data. Okay, so in this lecture, we'll talk a little bit about getting set up first. Um, we'll talk about reading CSV files, um, a couple you know, common mistakes you may run into. Um, checking for problems in your data. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about kind of where your files are living on your computer, um, how you kind of define where files are, as well as reading in different file formats. So maybe um, you don't have a CSV file, maybe you have an Excel file um, or some other data, uh, data format. The good thing is that R is very flexible with that kind of stuff. Um, and then maybe you want to output some results. You've, you've done some manipulation. You want to write a CSV file or you want to save an object. We'll talk about how to do that as well. Okay. Um, so first, before we dive into any of this stuff, uh, we're going to actually make a new R project here on the spot. Um, so let's make an R project together so we can stay organized in the next steps. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a new R project by clicking this button at the top left. OK, so um, I'm going to create a new directory. I'm going to create a new project in an empty directory. And so this means I'm just kind of making a new folder within our project. Okay, and this is just the name I wanna give this folder. So Okay, and I want this to be um, just on my desktop. That's somewhere easy, I can find it. Um, but if you need to, you can put it somewhere else. Okay, so I'll go ahead and create that. All right, so now I have a new project set up. Um, you can see that here it's telling me um, my project is the intro to our class, the one that I just set up. And I'm now in a place that has this R project file. Okay, and so we'll talk a little bit more about um, what, how this is gonna help us in a second. Okay, so just going over that again. So click that R project button. Click new directory. We got a great question about how this is different from setting a working directory. Yeah, that's a great question. So we're going to talk a little bit about that in a second. Um, you know, what is a working directory and, and what, um, how that's in, important and, and meaningful for pulling your files out. Um, but the nice thing about having an R project is it sets the working directory automatically. So setting up a project with this R project file, it tells R automatically that I want this to be my working directory. So if I were to go to my, you know, drag these windows away, my desktop, um, it's made this new folder that I created, this new project, it's made this my working directory. But yeah, that's a good question.
right? So new directory, you know, you can also add a our project file to an existing folder if you want to. Um, but I like to start fresh um, a lot of the time. Okay, again, new project. And then type in the name um, and create. Okay, and like I showed you, you have a new folder um, wherever you created that, and in my case on the desktop. Um, and just as we're going through this stuff today, uh, to make sure that you're um, that R can find the files we're working with, uh, you can, if you're inside this project and you kind of drag and drop that data to that folder, it's going to know where exactly to find that. Okay, so now we've talked to, you know, set up our project and, and sort of gotten a little bit more organized. Uh, let's talk a little bit about just data in general. Uh, so everything we're gonna be doing in the rest of this class will be real, actual data collected by someone. Uh, we're not gonna use simulated data um, just cause, you know, that's not what we work with in the real world. Uh, so we'll be working a little bit with, um, we've got some like, Baltimore data, uh, like bus routes, we've got monuments that are throughout Mar Maryland, a bunch of other stuff that um, is is from kind of the city government, and, you know, data that's been collected, um, you know, just by real people. Um, and some of this functionality is part of the JHUR package that we installed yesterday. Okay, reading in data is really the first real step of, of any real project analysis, unless we're, you know, kind of playing around with R as a calculator. This is kind of where we're going to get started with, with our work. R can read almost any file format, um, especially, you know, if you've got, um, I think like stat stata files, um, SAS files, something like that. Um, a lot of stuff can be read, even like even images can be read, but um, some of that has to happen through add-on packages. Remember, these are the kind of extensions that help R have more capabilities, um, but we can read a lot of things, um, but we're gonna focus on comma separated files. These are a great reproducible file format. It's just, you know, very, very simple data separated by commas. Um, also tab delimited or Excel files you'll probably run into occasionally. Okay, so we'll work with this youth tobacco survey data set. And so the, uh, the YTS, uh, the youth tobacco survey data set was developed to provide states with comprehensive data on both middle school and high school students, uh, their tobacco use, exposure to secondhand smoke, whether they've stopped smoking, all kinds of stuff, um, you know, familiarity with um, pro-tobacco or anti-tobacco messaging. Um, so really, really um, interesting and useful data set. And if you want to kind of explore it more, you can check it out here. Okay. And so this is a big data set. So, you, you know, it had a lot of information here, <laughs> um, but you can download it directly from our, our website. So you can click on this. Um, it'll ask you to download it. Um, I'm not going to just for now. Um, um, so you can download it. Um, you may have to kind of go through a few more steps in your browser. Actually, I think I will download it. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. So it's opened up in Excel. That just happens to be the default for me, uh, but I'll close out of that for now. Okay, so how do we actually do this? Put it in practice. Okay, so we're gonna use a library called Reader that contains the function read underscore CSV. And so we talked a lot, we used a lot this combined function. Um, this read CSV is just a different kind of function doing something a little bit different. Okay, um, so first thing we need to do is that this isn't in R by default. 
we're going to need to load that library. Uh, so we run library uh, reader. And then um, I want to assign this red data set. I want to assign this to a new variable called dat. OK, so this works just the same way we've been assigning variables previously. So variable on the left, arrow, um, and then the function that will read the data itself. OK. And so what goes inside this read CSV function, um, this is actually just pointing to the direct location of this file. In this case, um, it got cut off a little bit here, but it's just using this link right here. The nice thing is you can pull data directly from a CSV that's online, which is super handy. Uh, you don't really need to store it on your laptop or anything. Um, OK, so I can pull it in there. Um, and then just to make sure that my data looks OK, um, I'm going to use the head function. So this is a really great way to just look at the first um, couple lines of the data, You know, make sure it's, you know, it's what I expect. Um, so I'll do head. Um, the data in question, and I can do a comma and tell it how many lines I want it to display. So if I wanted to display 20 lines, I could put a 20 here. Okay. So we jump over to R. Going to load that library and make sure you don't spell library incorrectly. I do that often. Okay, it's loaded. You shouldn't get any uh, error messages or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and copy this link. Just say dat is a new object, a new variable. You use read underscore CSV. It gives me that option. It tells me it's from the reader package right here. I'm going to use quotes because this is not a number. Okay, we get some information um, about the data set. And if I want to look at it, I can just use the head function. Okay, great. Um, so our data is locked and loaded. Okay, so what's going on behind the scenes when we actually use this read underscore CSV function? Um, Basically, it parses this. It knows how to read it. It's got all the equipment it needs to, to read it and turns it into something called a tibble, which is a special uh, kind of rectangular data frame. Think of it as a spreadsheet kind of um, where data are split into rows and columns. Um, and you don't really need to know kind of the details of how it works, but um, the uh, cool thing is that it tries to guess which um, uh, what what each column is of the data uh, the data that you're reading and it tries to guess whether is it numeric is it a character string you know you have something a column for like state or something like that it's going to guess that that's a character type um, or you have numbers you know let's say a year or um, you know uh, cigarettes per day or something like that <laughs> um, then then that would be numeric so it's trying to guess this. Okay, so um, okay, I think um, all right. So we have a couple different options for how we read data into R. Uh, so obviously, um, if you have secure data or something like that, it probably won't be hosted, you know, um, on a random website. Um, so we wouldn't want to use a link for that. Um, but read CF CSV can take any kind of argument um, or a couple different types of arguments for where that file is. Okay. So again, read CSV needs the path to your file to return the data. This file argument um, is the path to your file in quotations, like I said. Um, and this can be a path in your local computer absolute file path, relative file path. Um, it can be a path um, to a file on a website too. So uh, we already did something that looked a little bit like this. 
Um, but let's say we want to read in um, the data that I just downloaded. Okay, so let's do um, a different, let's call it something different. Okay, so I'm going to use that same read underscore CSV function. We did always use quotes for this file path. Um, I can also say exactly what argument I want this to be. So file equals whatever that file path is. But for now, I don't really need that. Um, so let's do the absolute path. So um, if I were to go and open up my um, my downloads. Oh, yeah, sorry. Perfect. Oh, I was just going to point out this, um, that we had some students that were confused about, I'm not sure if it's about getting their downloads, like finding their downloads and where the file is. There's a video about that in the slides um, from yesterday, um, depending on whether you have a Mac or a PC. Um, but then once you get to your downloads, as Ava's showing, <laughs> um, <laughs> then you can um, do what Ava's going to show. <laughs> Cool. Okay. So, um, yeah, so, so go to your downloads. Um, that's, you know, this is the data that I just downloaded like two seconds ago. Um, and I could say, all right, well, I know it's in my downloads, so I'm going to figure out, okay, my absolute path if I'm on a Mac is this pretty long and exhausting um, file path. I'm just going to copy the name. Or actually, just hold on. Copy the name. <laughs> I'm going to paste that because it's a nice, nice long file name. .csv. Okay, same thing. It's able to read the data from that file that I downloaded, um, or you know, this could be some file of data you created on your computer. Okay. Um, so this is where the cool thing about the project comes in. So remember, I'm still in this intro to R class project. I've got this R project file. Okay, so I'm going to drag these down for a second. I'm actually going to take, just kidding here. Um, I'm going to take this data that I downloaded, and I'm actually going to add it to the folder for the project that I just created. So do, 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 taking it over there. And I can see that now I have this data in my project folder. Okay. Um, and now you should see the data here. We haven't read it into R yet, but it's telling us that file is kind of ready to use. And so this avoids us having to figure out what this is. And you know, if we move something out of our downloads folder, um, you know, it's good to clean that up occasionally, um, then yeah, we don't have to include that. So um, let's make a new thing. Data in project is read underscore CSV. And all I need now is that file name, okay? So what I've done there is actually I've done tab to autocomplete. So I'm just going to type in the first three letters, hit tab, and it autocompletes it for me. So much easier. Okay. And so that's why uh, doing a project is really, really handy. It takes care of that um, messiness, this stuff. Um, and prevents you, you know, from if you move things around, um, it can help you with that. And we'll cover that a little bit more in the lab. Yeah, okay. a few students are um, confused about this part. So, so don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna go through this in the lab together in, in just a bit. Okay, um, hopefully, um, yeah, that folks aren't, aren't getting too many errors with um, our studio not, not wanting to create a project or something like that. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll definitely go over that. Okay, um, so, you know, like I said, you downloaded the data 
um, but where is it? We really don't know where to look for it. Um, so this is why our projects are handy. And like I just said, we can take that data from our downloads and drag it and drop it into that project. So we don't have to deal with the messiness of that absolute file path. Makes it much easier to find the data. Okay, so just a little bit more about this function. You know, it's pretty powerful. We're gonna be using it a lot. Um, it's a special case of this read delimited function, okay? So this is a very, very general function that helps us read a, any kind of delimited file into a data frame. So um, basically any, it could be um, semicolon delimited, it could be slash delimited, just means that it has some kind of character or tab or something that is separating the data. Um, just like read underscore CSV, read delimited needs that file path, uh, needs to know where to look for that file and it'll return um, a table just like we talked about. Um, so if you have a file that is delimited in some other way, you use what's called this uh, delimited argument um, and an argument is just a, um, you're, you're telling it something, you know, a little bit more information of how to perform that function. So you tell it, oh, okay, I want delimited to be a comma, um, or I want delimited to be a tab, um, or I want delimited to be a slash or semicolon or, or whatever you have in your file that's actually separating the individual data. Okay, so again, you want the file, which is the path where you're saving your file in quotes right here. And you want the delimited, which is what separates the fields within your data record. So that's this right here. Okay. And um, when we're talking about read underscore CSV, it's really just assuming that it's, uh, you know, if it's a CSV file, it's going to have commas. So it saves you a little bit of time there. But let's say I want to use read delimited, which again is that more general purpose function. I want to read that in. I'm going to tell it this time, I'm going to be very specific. I'm going to tell it delim equals in quotes uh, the comma character. Okay, so I should read it in just the same. Okay, and so you may have, um, you know, a project that has, uh, you know, as you get more detailed, you have more stuff going on in your project folder, you may want to organize it in files, um, you, you know, maybe have some other aspects um, of your project. So, you know, something like, um, you know, I've got my intro to our project. I'm going to make a new folder and this could be data or something like that. And maybe I want to store my data in that folder. You can do that um, by specifying, you know, I want that data part of things. And this um, double dot slash is also useful if you need to just move up one folder. So let's say you wanted to work in desktop rather than intro to R class. Um, you could do that as well. And again, um, the data is successfully read into your workspace. You'll see a little bit of information on how it read the columns in. So in this case, year is a special kind of number called a double. Um, and most of these are numeric, which is actually, um, or most of these are, are, are number values. So, um, so there's, you know, possibility of doing kind of addition algebra on them if we want. Okay, so mistakes and, you know, just as you're learning, totally, totally normal for some stuff to happen, um, but working path to trying to read files that R can't find 
doing an R project can help with this. Like I said, um, it avoids the problem of having to kind of type out the whole path here, this stuff. Um, and always remember to watch out for typos. So X, uh, capital and lowercase are different. Um, and like I said, our studio helps with this with tab completion. Um, so it can help you avoid spelling and uh, you know typo errors. Um, again, data type problems is that string or character or number, you know, what's going on. Um, <laughs> watch out for making sure that you, uh, if you have a quotation on one side of your file path, uh, that you end it with the quotation as well. Um, parentheses and brackets are also sometimes things that, um, that uh, can trip us up. Okay, so uh, a few more things uh, that we can do once we've read our data in. So we've got this um, variable dat, which represents all of the data in the CSV file. Um, we can use the spec function to show us some of the specification of how the data was read in. So if we run spec on uh, the spec function on the dat variable, can see the different columns, you know, what um, kind of data types they are. So measure, you know, this is some type of numeric, uh, uh, some type of measure here, but it's read in as a character in this case. A um, couple of things, a year is read in as a number, that's a relief. Um, so it's doing, um, doing an okay job guessing. Uh, sample size is a special number called a double. Okay. Um, and this is kind of a cool function. Um, so problems can show us if there were any obvious issues when the data is read in. Doesn't promise that our data is perfect, but it can show us if there's, you know, um, some, sometimes, you know, you read data into Excel or something like that, and it doesn't parse it quite right. Um, so this can show us if there's anything like that happening. And in this case, it looks like when we run the problems function on that, um, it, it's saying, okay, well, um, it doesn't look like there's actually any problems because the output from problems is a tibble. So it's a special um, table basically showing each line with a concern. Okay, so if we get this kind of empty tibble, that tells us that, okay, well, Tentatively, the data was read in okay. Okay, so like I said, that looks good so far, but um, what about a messy data set with problems? Um, so this is just a kind of toy data set um, that uh, we use in a different class that we teach, uh, but it's about UFO sightings, <laughs> kind of fun. Um, but we read it in here. And when we run problems on it, we see we've got all kinds of issues. Um, so it's saying at row 98, um, it's expecting in one of the fields, it's expecting basically like a number or data entry there, but it's actually seeing two columns where it's supposed to only see one. Um, and then something very bad is going on in row uh, 106 and so on and so on. So there's a lot of um, basically a lot of rows in this data set that are problematic. It needs major cleanup before we're able to kind of do any analyses uh, like statistics or anything on it. Um, and the stop for problems function, um, you know, you may not be using that right away, but it can also be pretty helpful if you want an analysis to stop if there are any of these, you know, kind of problematic rows. So the stop for problems will basically, you know, stop any kind of automated process you have. Um, it'll error out and it won't continue in case you have some, uh, some data weirdness going on. Okay, my favorite part of uh, some, some basically some R tips that we haven't covered yet is um, how, do you, how do you get help? When you wanna know what a function actually does, how do you do that? <laughs> so, um, you can use a question mark um, followed by the function name, or you can do help 
um, the help function and then the name of the function in quotations here. So um, let's go over here and say, um, you know, I can't really remember what this, uh, um, what, what is uh, this length function do? Yeah, okay, gives me the length of an object. You know, I put in a, whatever that um, vector or that variable is, I can put that in as the, as the main argument. Um, same thing. What does read to limb do? Um, it gives me a little bit more information about how that works. Okay, so super handy. Okay, um, so yet another way we can read some data into our studio is a little bit of drop down support. Um, so, you know, if you can't remember off the top of your head or you know you can't find in the in your notes where you read something in, you can also uh, just import it kind of in the point and click interface. Um, so the way you do that, um, so I'm going to go to File, Import Data Set, and From Text Reader. Um, so let's say, okay, I want to go to File, Import Data Set, and uh, From Text Reader. So this reader is the key part here. That's what I want. Okay. Uh, so File, I could enter the, the URL here to the, the website where the data is, or um, I can browse. So like, you know, look in my downloads or in this case in the project. I'll just click that data. Um, and it gives me a little preview of the data, which is kind of nice saying, okay, I've got year, I've got topic type, topic description. Um, and it actually tells me the code that I need to do that. It's like, okay, here's, here's a little preview. Um, and then I can just run import. All right. I've brought in the data and I've actually done one more thing, which is view of that data. And it kind of brings up a table preview in, in R, which I think is super nice. Um, and this works just like another, another file, like a script file. Um, this, the view is really handy um, for smaller data sets, but if you have something that's huge, um, view is not gonna work so well. So just use it. Um, Use it when you kind of have an idea of what, what kind of data you're working with. Okay. Okay, and so that's a little bit uh, just like a GIF of that, uh, if you need to re refer to it later. Okay. Um, there are uh, data importing functions provided in base R um, rather than the reader package. So they look really, really similar. Okay, so read to limb, um, this, this function has a dot and this one has a dot. Um, they have a little bit different syntax than the ones that we're using. Um, and so they just call the arguments a little bit different things. So, you know, you could use them if you want, but we'll be focusing on the functions that are in the reader package. Okay, so you may see these pop up, um, just be aware that they're used um, somewhat differently. Okay, so let's, um, oh, okay, so just a quick review here. Um, just took a second. Um, so these are the uh, functions that are provided in base R, we're not really using those. Um, again, they're you, they have a little bit different way that they're used in R. Um, so we prefer that you use these underscore versions. So read underscore delim and read underscore CSV. Remember that you need to provide that location, that file path. It's going to go ahead and parse it into rows and columns. It's going to guess the column type, um, and it will return to us a special data frame called a tibble. Okay. Um, and then these two functions, I think, are, are really going to be the ones you're using quite often. Um, so this head function gives us a preview of the first few rows. 
And this spec function gives us the specification of you know, what are the types of data in this data set. OK, and we can read other file types. So these are common ones you're likely to see. But you can also use uh, different functions coming from, for example, um, the read Excel package. So if you were to load library read Excel, um, you can use this function here to read from an um, XLSX file. <laughs> um, and there's also other packages. If you have SAS data, for example, um, you can use this package for that. This package also has functions to read SAS format. So basically, if you have data that may be kind of special format and you're not able to save it as a CSV, there are workarounds for you. Um, it just, uh, like we said, takes a little bit of extension onto R via a package that has different functions. OK, um, so we just talked uh, uh, through the first part of the lab. Um, just a little bit more about what a working directory is, where these files are living on your computer. Uh, so working directory in um, uh, a, work, a working directory um, is kind of where R is working. Um, it's where it's looking for files. And setting the working directory means basically specifying where those files are going to be, um, where you're working, all of that. So I go to my R and, you know, I want to um, just see where I'm working. Where is R looking on my computer? I can do this get working directory function. And it's telling me, oh, okay, I'm working, uh, on my computer, in the desktop, in this project that I made intro to our class. If this is not where I want to look for files, if it's, you know, I, I want to work out of downloads for some reason, or I want to work off my desktop, I can do that. Um, I can use this set working directory command. But in general, using our project is really helpful for, you know, not having to worry about this stuff. Okay, um, so just in general, if you're using the read dots or read underscore CSV, and you're looking for this file name, it's gonna look in that working directory. In this case, it's you know looking right here. If you were to use as the file name data slash bike lanes long dot CSV, it means it's looking in a data folder in your working directory. So it would be looking in this plus a folder called data. And of course, you're always able to use the absolute path. So if you want to kind of fill in this whole thing, um, you can do that. Um, and there's ways to kind of get the full path of um, any file on your computer. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to do that on the Windows machine, but we can uh, provide more information about that if you're interested. Okay, like I said, setting up an R project can avoid headaches. Telling It tells R that the working directory is wherever that R project is. So as long as you can get your files in that folder, you should be golden. So uh, what you'll see is the project loaded in the top right. And you'll see this R project file um, in, um, sorry, in that, in that particular folder. So that's that folder that I made earlier and it, it appears on my desktop. Okay, so uh, like, you know, very, it's super great to be able to read data, but, you know, maybe we wanna have some output too. We wanna share our data. Um, the reader package provides very, very similar functions for writing the data. So um, just like read underscore CSV, uh, you can do write underscore CSV. So this will write any kind of data table that you have in R. It'll write it to a CSV file. You could also write a delimited file if you want to delimit by tab or something else. 
Okay, so let's talk just a little bit about what kind of arguments you're going to use um, for, uh, for this function. Okay, so the first thing you want, that first argument is going to be whatever the data is that you want to write. Um, the second argument, this file, is going to be whatever you want to name it. So this could be an absolute path. It's just the same kind of conventions that we're doing with the read, dot, read underscore CSV. Um, it could be an absolute path, a relative path, file name only. So, you know, let's say I want to um, write underscore CSV. I want to write youth to, I'm going to make this full screen here. Um, I'm going to write it to Ava's data.csv. Okay, and now because it's working out of this directory with my R project, I see that that data has been added right here. Um, and if I preview that, um, or I could read it back in if I wanted to. So um, yeah, pretty handy to be able to write data as well. And again, if you want to do different delimiters, that's totally fine. OK, and one kind of final um, idea to take away um, is writing uh, our native format files. So let's say you're working with a table, maybe down the road you're doing some manipulation on it or something like that. You may want to save it as a R object, an RDS. Um, so this is a little quicker if you're going to be reading files in and out or you want intermediate files or something like that. This is another option. You don't need to save it as a, a CSV and then read it back in as a CSV. Um, so this works the same way. It's the write underscore RDS function. Again, it's taking that argument of the data table first, and then it's taking the file name here. And just, you know, make sure you have the right, um, you know, ending, file ending. Um, and so like, let's say, you know, I have a variable that I'm working with. Uh, uh, this is a vector uh, 133. I'm writing it to this, this X variable, you know, or it could be name or, you know, whatever. Um, I can save that as, um, you know, just like I can save that vector. Um, it doesn't have to be a data table. Um, and um, I'm giving it the name, you know, my vector. Okay, and then if I want to read it back in, I can read RDS and get that exact same um, exact same variable back. So yeah, this is handy if you want to save any data, come back to it later, um, anything like that.